Well, I feel like I can never make too many of these videos on supplies and t tools. These are inking tools. Um, I had a little demonstration. Well, I had a couple of demonstrations and I get, I still get a lot of questions about this brush which is the Raphael, and I've mentioned the name many times, but I still get asked questions about it. So we'll just go over a couple little things and answer a couple of the questions. Um, people think it's, uh, like I, I guess maybe it's the way I'm holding it or it looks, but people think it's a hard brush, but it is not. It's just a regular soft sable, um, regular brush. And this one, lots of questions when I did demo with using this. I, although I use the, um, the brush many times, um, quite often, like 95% of the time, I'll use my, the, the brush just for pra you know, practical purposes and um, speed. So I did just a quick uh, video using this nib. I still use a lot of, mostly I use the uh, Hunt 102, but um, I also have a few other nibs that I use that I trade, you know, that I um, occasionally go to just for fun or just for kicks. So um, I will go ahead and answer a few few questions about this because I said I would. I said I would make a video and here is the video. So I will, um, first off, I apologize ahead of time if you, if you're gonna go hunt these down. I did get this as a gift and in, a, you know, a pack of varieties of nibs to test out from a friend who has a friend who has, um, who sells a bunch of different nibs for calligraphy. So there is another place to check out if you're looking for different nibs to try out. Um, there are a lot of nibs that calligraphers use and um, it, you know, I, I mean, there's no rules that you can't use it on art, so. I would maybe check out a few sites that might have um, pens or nibs for calligraphers. Um, if you like testing out different um, nibs and pens and pen holders, which again, I got this from um, Ink Slinger Pen. He makes pens for his wife used to do, or it's probably still does, does beautiful calligraphy and um, and that's actually who gave me a pack of these nibs. So to answer the question, what nib is that? What pen is that? So I have it loosely sitting in this nib holder, different types of nib holder. This one happens to be this, this style for these types of nibs. There are different nibs, some are like this where you slide it into the holder that has like a a holder in the middle and you slide it to the side whereas like the hunt 102 i'll grab the hunt 102 real quick and i have many nib holders guys so <laughs> don't start asking well you can ask questions i guess um, so these are more of like the round, like complete round like cylinders. This is kind of an open. So you have different types of holders. Um, I guess this can work here too if it, um, if the diameter is wide enough. So that's the hunt, my old holder. So this like I said, don't please don't be mad if you hunt this down and you can't find it. I will write the name down. Oh yes, actually handwriting. I will write it down. Um, it is the E. I don't know if I pronounced it right. I believe 
it is the Electra number two because you always ask that too and my brush common i've heard that this is hard to find in europe so raphael a 404 i am using a size two but I've used three, four, one. Um, if you find a good brush, it'll have a nice point. So you do get that same, um, you know, range in terms of thick and thin, the lines and the um, line weight and flexibility. So, okay, so I'll just do First, we'll go, you've seen the Raphael, I'll, I'll end with the Raphael, but I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about this Electra. <laughs> so again, I apologize if you have a hard time finding these. I don't think they make any more, but maybe they make different ones, but you can still find different versions of it. It, it takes a lot of just kind of like testing out pens and, and um, nibs or mapping point or you know I don't know if there's like technically different but um, sometimes if it's a little more difficult to oops sorry to um, so you don't want to break the nib or bend it too much just to kind of keep so you don't mess it up I sometimes use just a cloth or paper towel and use that to hold the side just to give it a little more pressure while you're placing the nib into the holder and wipe away if you have a little bit of junk on there and if you find that you have a lot of like old ink that's dried on there if you're not very good about cleaning your nibs. Um, sometimes just a little bit of like alcohol on paper towel or on, on like a piece of cloth and just kind of, you know, just wipe away, let it soak and just kind of like let it break down or thin out, just off the ink a little bit. That'll make it for easier cleaning. Um, I mean, otherwise like just a rinse in water will work nicely. So, a lot of dry ink, let me clear that off. So you can um, play around with your whatever calligraphy pen or nib or you find. So with this one, I think you guys like the, it has more of like a, a soft feel, almost like a brush. So you can get good flexibility, like real nice and fine but it works almost like like a hard pen and it doesn't take too much pressure. So you can really get a good range and a whole bunch of fine, fun lines with it. Let's see, and I dip and I mean, there are three little wells, I don't know what you call it, but you don't really need much, it'll hold that ink. And sometimes if you have dry gunk on there, it's gonna disturb the flow of your ink. So make sure you're, when you start off, your nib is nice and clean and it doesn't have a lot of dry ink on there. Um, the The nice thing about this is, like I said, it's, it's a nice soft feel. You can get like really wonderful, sharp, thin lines with it. So if you need to do small details, like, you know, I don't know, eyes. And you want like really fine lines, but you also need like that bit of thickness. <laughs> it's a crappy eye, but. So, um, or if you want to do eyebrows where you're doing some thin lines and you want to do, it works almost like 
works almost like a, a brush. The Danger, I'll give you a nice warning. It is fun to play with. I mean, you if you like doing, you know, a lot of these loppy kind of lines, it works for that. It does, and if you want to come back and do like extra thin or you want to do fancy stuff, more stylized stuff like that, it works great for that, but I don't know if you can see that when you do go too thick, the ink will puddle. So you'll have more waiting time and you have to get into the routine of working in one direction, like uh, definitely left to right. So you keep working in this direction and away from, you know, the the live ink area where you're gonna have to give it more time, allow it more time to, to dry. Now I wanna fix this eye. A, a lot more time to dry. So it is fun and you, I mean, you get a lot of like, you know, like I said, good range in terms of go forward, backward, to whatever is comfortable for you. And it doesn't, I mean, it, it doesn't require like so much pressure. I think that's the nice thing. If you're working for a long time, your hand can get really tired out by having to apply so much pressure um, when you're using like a nib that is more firm or like a harder metal. This is a very flexible metal, very flexible tip. So you can work for a longer amount of time and you can, and it's really friendly to going back and forth. You can always do that with every nib. Um, and it's not like so sharp that you constantly, you know, tear and you have to clean up your, your nib tip. So like I said, nice, you can go back and forth. Nice because you get lot line um, variation. Um, nice because you have, let's see, yeah, and it is fun to play with, so you have, um, you can have a lot of fun with it. So, yes, yeah, so that's, and, and there are so many more, um, nibs out there that I haven't, I mean, you know, really play around with. I'm not huge or, you know, just for no reason. I just haven't really tested out like very many um, tools and pens. And I'm, you know, occasionally lucky enough to have these sent to me to test out. And I, I, um, I'm so grateful for that because I do occasionally use it here and there. Um, even if I don't use nibs that often, I still do use them and it comes in like, you know, for a different hair, or different line, or certain styles that kind of require these lines a little bit more. Um, and, you know, with, with the hunt, you do get that, but you don't get that same, like, um, you know, fun brush, you know, brush-like um, lines out of a nib. I think you can get that out of more calligraphy pens. So if you want to play around and test out different ones, um, so there you go. That's the nib that I was using like a couple of videos ago. You can go back and check. I'm just encouraging you to go back and watch old videos too. So this is what it looks like. And um, this is what it is. Just in case the audio doesn't come out clearly or you're not sure what I just said. There it is. Um, and these are the lines that you get from, from it. So, like I said, I still, now we move on. So I hope that answers a lot of questions about this, this nib here. Again, feel free and you should definitely explore and play around if you like, if you enjoy inking with nibs. Um, check out, you know, just, not just, uh, inking nibs, but, you know, like I said, Calligraphers have all kinds of fancy, wonderful stuff that they use. Um, explore some of those sites. And now we move on to 
my old friend, you've seen me use quite often, um, almost, <laughs> I don't know, probably 80% of my videos features this guy, Raphael. Raphael 8404, this is the orange tip one. There's a beige, and um, to me, not a huge difference between the beige and the orange. I mean, I just used the orange one. Uh, I believe the beige has like a longer um, brush tip. Um, I think once you kind of like get used to using a brush and just finding what, you know, whether it's like it has a fatter belly or a thinner, as long as the tip's good. And like I said, it is just a regular soft brush. Yeah, I just put that in my mouth. Um, what do we have? So it is a regular, like sable, natural um, hairbrush, and you can use it. Sometimes I use it in a way where it looks more like um, like a pen lines than brush line. Like I think people typically think that brush is all, you know, just all smooth like that. You're tapered dry ink so you can get dry um dry brushing when you start off with a brush two of your brush is dry in the center and you want to do some br um dry brush you can start with that when the brush is still dry just get a little ink on the outside the center will still be dry so you can still get dry brush effect and if you want clean like edges for the dry brush that way if you want more rough um, not rough but like undefined edge I find that it's the backside will give you like more undefined you see the difference <laughs> where it's like the tip will give you more clean this the backside is is that so <laughs> okay so yeah brush Raphael so with these lines um, what I was saying about more pen like lines using your brush I I do I do use these two how I hold my brush these two as sort of like the um, the base and the flexibility comes in these three. I kind of rested on this. Sometimes the index finger just wanders off. It does absolutely nothing. And these, my thumb and middle, middle finger does like a lot of like the adjusting for, the, and sometimes I use this one to move it back and forth. But sometimes it's just the base there. And this kind of, you know, does the light bit of, this is a little light bit of work. This does a lot of the work. This does a lot of the work. So there's your base, just to keep it kind of hovering over the page. And use for short strokes, I guess that's when you use, I kind of wiggle this guy. So you can do like short curves, use this guy. And the base really doesn't move much. I mean, like I gl glided along the page, but um, oopsie, I got ink from this. It's still wet. Um, so for short curves, I just kind of use this as the curve. My hands are shaking now because I don't know why. So for longer, that's when I pivot more like the wrist is where you're getting. And then for larger, larger, that's when you kind of like throw in your elbow for the curves. So, yes, yeah, so I went down a little side avenue there. But yeah, I think people think that, or some of you think that it's, you know, for some reason, reason think that it's a more of a firm tip like a pen, like almost like a felt tip. 
um, is it just looks like that when I ink like pen like lines like these. I don't know when you use it more like a pen it looks like it's a firm tip. Um, steer clear of that. So you can still get like sharp flat lines. Say so your so you can use it more like a pen, or you can get like sharp, flat, blunt um, lines. And when you do that, it looks more like, or may appear like the tip is more like a firm or felt tip and you can go and I'm just pivoting with my elbow you can go pretty far with like a flat line using your brush so brush isn't just like for taper lines like these it can work with let's see it can work as like a more brush feel or I feel like you can also use it if you just need kind of like pen like lines too. So I think a lot of you are kind of maybe thrown off by some of the lines that I'm throwing down. Um, but it is the Raphael is a soft regular brush. Uh, does that answer any questions? And oh yeah, one more, one more question regarding the, um, how do I keep the ink from drying on my brush? It does last for quite a while. What kind of ink you use is um, also a huge um, factor in how quickly the ink dries on your brush. So you can, um, test out different types of ink. Some people like ink that dries faster. Sometimes like the more like acrylic, more, um, let's see. No, I'm just goofing off. Okay, so um, what type of ink you use um, dries either like it will, will stay wet longer or will dry faster. It depends and it also comes down to your preference because sometimes um, you get a little bit more of like a, a more of a, f uh, a more, I don't know, work time or play time with like what with ink that is not as thick, but you definitely want to make sure um, if you're looking for like more dark or black or indigo or whatever type of ink you want, um, opacity, um, if you're going to erase, um, how well does that ink stand up to the eraser if you're still working traditionally? Um, how do you uh, how do you keep it from drying on your brush? I think if you if you use ink that dries quickly, um, then I always, uh, whether, you know, dry slower or, or faster, it's always, if you're going to be working for a while, it's always a good idea to have, I always have like a little cup of water, like, um, I'll show you my crusty water hold. So this is just a yog an old yogurt container, but jar, cup, whatever you have, just have a little bit of water in there, like a good amount. So occasionally rinse your brush in there just to keep it um just to keep it soft and and um and you know keep it from drying out keep it wet and then you know rinse it in water and just dab it out so you're not watering down your ink too much and i always recommend wiping your brush like just let it soak that way or wipe away so you keep and this is also where you can kind of reform the shape of your um brush too to make sure you keep that point um, just rotate it, wipe away from the point. If you have to, this is a great time to kind of reform your brush, especially if your ink is starting to dry and it's starting to make the, um, hair or the, you know, do like funky stuff and starts to misbehave, like it'll 
sort of like bend this way and that and you won't get a nice sharp point so that's a perfect time if not before that to kind of rinse it off rinse off the all that dry ink or the ink is drying or you can use it to do dry brush effect that's perfect timing for that too so uh yeah so rinse it off dry this you know like dry it with a towel paper towel or whatever and use that opportunity to kind of like reform the shape um and once you're done also do the same thing give i don't use anything fancy for my brush i i never have like clean in terms of cleaners um i will just rinse it in water again never in the direction where you're kind of like breaking up the the tip but hold it where the stream is going in the flow of towards you know the point and dry it let it soak even sometimes I will fold it over and like really soak out the water because I I don't like water sitting in there for a long amount of time because I think it just you know kind of like messes up with the the hair on that brush and um, form that back to a nice point I. I let it dry not upwards like that where water continues to flow that way but I dry it this way that way I feel like it is drying and water is able to kind of evaporate out that way holds the point and to the next time you use it and if your point starts to get a little funky like I said reform with water and uh, some people have used hair conditioner if you're trying to get an old brush to recover its shape if it's just you know if water doesn't do it you can try a little bit of hair conditioner and you know kind of let that soften the brush again and um rinse it make sure you give it a good rinse again and try to get it back into shape and uh, see if that will behave for you so that is a little bit on like I said that occasionally if I drop in some new tools or new nibs I will try to follow up because I know you have a lot of questions I may not answer those questions on social media but you can always come here and look for a video on any of these things and I'm sure I have made a few videos on the Raphael um, people have said Windsor Newton that's absolutely this you know just as good whatever you find works for you there's different brands there are so many varieties of all the same stuff that i use but there's like a lot of different versions in different brands so don't feel like it has to be what i use or another artist use what works for you is absolutely fine so um, that applies to brush pens ink paper whatever works for you that's up to you to kind of test out and play out and customize and I think that is um, also part of the fun is finding what works for you and, and and go with it because your style is different all our styles are different from each other and how you know what we enjoy in terms of like technique and stuff and consistency of ink um, all that stuff so um, these are what I use. It is in no way, shape, or form like the only tools you can use for professional inking. Um, pencilers use, you know, different uh, ballpoint pen, little, you know, Tombow, different tech pens. So whatever works for you. Um, and if you're inking someone else, if you're just, if you're a professional inker who's inking someone else, you can also talk to your penciler. Hopefully they know what you do and what you use and that's fine with them. But, um, it is definitely something that you adjust according to the style of the art, according to like what works for you, all that stuff. So these, I'm just sharing what I use and based on like the questions you have from my other videos. So there you go there's a nib and if you find these if you like them buy a whole bunch <laughs> if you don't like them you can always sell it to other people who are looking for them so i believe they're hard to find um but there you go guys hope that helps and once again where did i put that pen oh there it is 
Okay, so the holder is Ink Slinger pens, and I believe he still makes different types of holders. He makes clutch holders. He makes all kinds of fun, beautiful wood holders. Um, uh, yeah, happy hunting, happy art supplying day. Thanks, guys. Let me know if you have more questions, and I will try to make little videos to answer them. Alrighty, Merry Christmas, everybody.